Could you introduce our guest? Um, I will. I will again. I think I did. Oh, sorry. Um, we have. Uh, I have to uh, get into his surnames right. We have Trevor and Jose Glenn, correct? Correct. And you have a compound last name, so. Andres Rocas. It's uh, middle name's Andres, but the last name Rocha. Rocha. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <coughs> Capitalize very well. <laughs> it looked like that when I first made it. <coughs> Hello. Stand off to the side. Walk away your computer if you want to dance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'll stand in this second. How about that? <laughs> Can y'all see? Hello, um, I am Trevor. Uh, I am one of the uh, probably students that you uh, sent to watch class this year. Um, it was one of the greatest experiences I've had ever. Um, I had so much fun. Um, <laughs> Air Academy was probably the highlight. Um, yeah, if I miss anything, tell me, ask me questions, because uh, I'm not a very good improv artist. Um, so, Air Venture this year, I got, I got the uh, opportunity to. This is not how you arrived. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish. He took uh, commercial so thanks to you guys because. Well, you, you can't see, but the 7.5 is in the background. He wanted to fly with a 17-year-old buddy out there, but I said, no, you're not flying with another 17-year-old high school buddy. Um, so, three days. so I got to arrive early, in fact. I got to arrive uh, before Oshkosh even started. I got to go up on the uh, 25th. So um, I arrived there. Uh, so the 25th, we got our settled in our... Uh, house there and um, walked on to Whitman Fields. Um, I had had a friend of mine who was both uh, our age, 17, and he decided to uh, fly out there, a friend of ours, Cherokee, um, who is actually our president of EAA Chapter 20, Oliver Coolidge. Um, so, and my buddy Michael got to fly his Cherokee up to Oshkosh uh, with his brother. So he got, we met him there. Um, we were hanging around all the Cessna 195s for the most of the part. Uh, most of the uh, Oshkosh, uh, there was a group of about 15 of them, which was kind of cool to see all the same type of airplane planes in one spot. Uh, so we got there um, for the first two, three days. Uh, we watched the arrivals. Bonanzas to Oshkosh, you know, I think somebody here was involved in that. Um, that was quite an incredible sight. Um, all the mass arrivals, all the arrivals in general were awesome to see. Um, did get to see um, one almost ground loop. It was something I heard a squealing behind me and I turned around and started snapping pictures. I didn't actually include it, but uh, he was he scraped some paint off the tip of his wing uh, on 3.6 there, so that was a little bit of an interesting uh, start to my Oshkosh experience. Um, what kind of airplane? Uh, Super Cub, an older <coughs> Super Cub. So, yeah. And I was actually friends with one of the people in his group. So they said, I, I mentioned that I had the pictures, and they said, Where am I? Get those. Give me those pictures. So I was like, okay. The negatives. So that was quite, a, quite an experience. Um, favorite part about Oshkosh, once it has started. Um, so from the 28th until the 1st, uh, I got to experience Oshkosh just walking around, uh, riding the trams, etc. Um, I would say my favorite part about Air Venture itself was, or one of my favorite parts, of the entire thing was my favorite part, but um, was the daily air show, and I kind of turned it into, instead of an air show, I turned it into a show, because you walk around and everywhere there's something happening, so you're always within it. It's not only up in the air, it's on the ground, it's on the screen, it's uh, all the, uh, the, the stuff behind the scenes uh, that ends up in the air at some point but doesn't necessarily uh, fly. It's the lighting, the, um, this, the, the Garmin Avidine systems and stuff like that. So that was really interesting for me to see. Uh, the one week wonder, I got to watch that from kind of when it started. I actually saw it in its boxes getting pushed into its... Uh, 
tense. And uh, I kind of watched it as I, every time, I'd, every once in a while, I'd walk by and I'd say, wow, okay, there's a wing on it now. Um, and that was kind of cool to see. <coughs> Uh, I, and it was and it was great because you'd walk around in the morning, wake up as early as you felt like it, and you'd walk onto the fields. I mean, and you'd start drooling because there's so many airplanes everywhere. Um, you never really got. I personally never really got tired of it. Um, it was kind of surreal all the time. You'd be walking around, and be like, "When am I going to get tired of this?" And you never do. Um, and that's kind of what I've heard from all the. Uh, all the uh, other people that have been to Oshkosh. Um, I guess the, all the simulations they did during the air show were really, really cool. Some of them were uh, uh, and I'm kind of leading up to different things here, but uh, they did a couple of Vietnam simulations on one of the first air shows, and that was really cool because, I mean, they're, real, they're right there and they're showing you stuff that happened a while before we were born. That was just kind of cool to see. Um, this is my favorite part, the pyro. Um, I haven't seen any show that involves pyro except a couple fireworks shows on the 4th of July around here. And then there's, there's, there's fireworks and then there's this. Um, there was one of the days where we were on the, on the front line and uh, they did this exact maneuver with uh, Melissa and I believe it's Sip Stewart there. And they, um, they do a, a slip to slip pass, photo pass with the wall of fire behind it. And this, this was me covering my face because it was so hot and hoping that I got a shot with my camera. Um, and I luckily did get that. Um, that was really, really cool to see. Um, the, I will admit, I, the first time, the first pyro that went off for Oshkosh, I pretty much jumped out of my shoes because I wasn't expecting it. I had my hand in my camera, all of a sudden, boom, goes off over here. And I almost smacked my friend in the face. Um, my second favorite part about uh, the air show itself was the Thunderbirds. Um, they're kind of one of my, uh, like one of the things that I kind of like to pay attention to. I kind of do some simulations online uh, that involve the Thunderbirds. I fly virtual right wing, uh, so I enjoy doing that. And it was cool to actually finally see them uh, perform. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't get to see them perform in Travis because I was there for uh, the Andrini incident. Uh, so I was really excited to see them. And I finally did get to see him. I talked to the pilots, and uh, they were really nice about it. Um, night show. Uh, everybody had told me about the night show. They were right. Um, you don't very often see a four-ship T6 at night, light with LEDs in the engines, uh, flying their normal day show, except for a couple little things. But I mean, you don't get to see that anywhere. Uh, from what I, I mean, at least here in California, I haven't seen any night shows or heard of any night shows here in California. So, I mean, that was a really cool experience. Um, the fireworks, the pyro coming off of the wings, that was kind of unnerving, but it was cool. I mean, you get to see uh, just the, how graceful some of those pilots can be while they're up there. Um, and I also was lucky enough to have my uh, scanner with me. Uh, so I was able to find all the air boss frequencies and listen to how all the stuff goes on behind the scenes. I got you'd hear Rob Ryder come on the radio and say, "Hey, what's next?" or something like that, and that was kind of cool. Um, the fireworks show was unreal. It was the best fireworks show I've ever seen. Um, in its own, that was kind of a impressive moment. Um, of course, for the majority of it, I was running around trying to take photos. Kind of looked weird running around the main arch there on all on my own, but uh, you know, it turned out pretty nice. I guess. Really, uh, really yeah. Good picture. <laughs> um, yeah, that was so that was fun. Maybe Oshkosh wants to use that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I actually had a couple of photographer friends who were up there who were professional and were shooting for Oshkosh. They got some similar stuff. For EAA. Yeah, or uh, for EAA, yeah. Um, so that's kind of one of the shots that inspired this shot was kind of a copy of what am I, the one my friend did. Um, what's next? I don't know what's next. Okay, now what y'all been waiting for is the Air Academy itself. Um, Air Academy was unbelievably fun, and it was something I'll probably never forget. Um, the Air Academy was, oh, there goes the capitalization. Okay. Um, as you can see, we all became friends really, 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 really quickly. I mean, it was maybe a day and a half before we just got bored of ourselves and said, I'm going to go make as many friends as I possibly can, and we did. 
Um, as you can see, that guy on the right bottom there is actually one of our um, camp counselors. Uh, so he was, uh, he was kind of the uh, funny guy, and he kind of kept us all together. Um, and I mean, everybody knew everybody within three days, I would say. I mean, if you didn't know somebody, you would find out their name somehow or another. But I mean, it was close enough to where you, you didn't have to wait long to get to know somebody. Um, like I said, getting to know everybody really quickly. There were selfies all the time. I don't understand it yet, but every time I turned around, somebody was like this with a friend or something like that. I managed to sneak my way into a couple of them. Um, the classroom um, aspect of uh, Air Academy. Every day we would visit the classroom, do sort of a ground school lesson. Uh, and the instructor was, I can't remember his name, but he was a Boeing employee. And he, uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, I mean, there was some stuff maybe I had known, maybe like learning METARs, but I mean, even going over that stuff again, I learned things I, had, I didn't know I even existed. Like, what is dash B, uh, minus B, I mean, oh, it's light mist or something. Um, so that was really cool. Um, even though, I mean, it was classroom, but I mean, I was, I real I found myself constantly being interested in the things that we were being talked about. Um, and that's something that doesn't always happen in school. Um, <laughs> ground school is a different, that's not school, that's, that's learning. Um, <laughs> the Air Academy was a competitive place, but in a good way. Um, it seemed like every day there was some form of volleyball, frisbee, soccer, it was basically us getting rid of all of the energy we had. Um, and there were a couple of really good soccer games um, that occurred. I mean, it had nothing to do with aviation, but I mean, still, it was, it was, it was a bonding moment. It was really fun for all of us. Um, reflections, reflection pass. Um, basically, what I took away from uh, Air, Air Academy was that the younger generation, our generation, is is really, really inspired to do stuff, especially in aviation. Every single person I talked to at Air Academy was there because they loved it or had some connection to it in some way or another. Um, I think every single person there I talked to either is going to be a pilot, is trained to be a pilot, air traffic controller, aeronautical engineer, um, the whole nine yards, but it's all aviation. And they, I mean, everybody was talking about airplanes and stuff like that. So I mean, it was it was kind of cool to see that. Um, you don't get to see that every day. It's like I, I'm sitting in school and I'm like, you guys are missing out. I mean, there's nothing better than this. Um, I also learned from talking with some of the friends I made there that they want to be involved. So what EAA is doing with Young Eagles and chapters like this, sending us out to. Um, Oshkosh um, is really, really helping, I think, and it's, and it's made an impact on some people. Um, I, mean, and, I mean, I talked to a couple of my friends, and like it says there, they want to become more involved, but they don't know how. So and I think that's really where EAA has kind of, is trying to get to that point where they um, have figured out how to, or are trying to figure out what can we do, or they, EAA do to, um, to allow the our generation to become more involved more easily. Um, for me, it, I didn't even know about Young Eagles uh, until after I had started my flight training. Um, and I met one of my buddies uh, at the airport. He said, oh yeah, by the way, this does exist. Um, and I had heard about it maybe a year before, but I didn't pursue it because I didn't, I thought I was like, oh, it's for little two-year-olds, like, whatever. And I was wrong. So I got there and I was like, wow, okay, I should have done this. This could have gotten me on track a lot quicker. So I mean, that's one of the things I think that this is really making an impact on, stuff like this, the scholarships and sending uh, teenagers and stuff like that out to Oshkosh is really, really going to help because maybe 10 years from now or 15 years from now when those kids are uh, involved in the EAA chapters flying, they'll get some younger 8, 10-year-olds flying as soon as they can, they'll get them involved, and I think that's that's really cool. Um, I think that's the last slide. No? Oh, well, yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I will not forget it. Um, I hope I can contribute back to it in some way. Uh, come around and maybe uh, fly Young Eagles down here. I'll definitely do that. 
um, I'm really looking forward to being able to, I mean, I've seen from the, from just working on the ramp, making sure everybody's kind of in the right place at the right time. I mean, I've just seen kids go into this airplane and they're sweating and scared and they come out and they're just, and they're just, they're so happy. And I think that's, I think that's really cool. And I think that needs to, is something we should really pursue and, and promote more. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. I need to work on my capitalization. <laughs> Any questions? Burning questions? You take all those pictures yourself? Um, the majority of them, yeah. Yeah, I got I got a camera. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I got a camera just before Oshkosh. Specifically for Oshkosh, I was like, I'll pay the money and get it anyways. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. Hopefully it works. Did it work? Hopefully. Gotcha. Alright. Um, hello, um, or good night. Uh, I'm actually Ho Jose Rocha. I'm the other recipient. Uh, um, I also went to Air Academy with Trevor, uh, so I'll be sharing a little bit about that. Uh, so, this is a picture of all the students that were over there. Uh, all the way to the right, that's me. Uh, to the left, that's Trevor. And you see the, how diverse um, our group is with the females and also the males. The males, unfortunately, are taking most of the aviation community, as you can tell. But um, that is our family, we could say, that we spent that whole weekend. We actually grew really close to the people that are, actually have a similar interest as us like, with aviation. And we are going to be the new generation um, slowly taking over the aviation community. How many were there for your team? You know? Oh, it was six. Six? six. six. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to count all of these. <laughs> they yeah. don't really hold 48, but they had to accommodate two more extra bedrooms. There's four in each bedroom. Beautiful. So one of the things I really liked about the Air Academy is we actually got to do a lot of hands-on things that we could incorporate if we ever wanted to build aircraft. So um, some of the things that um, we did were sort of things like marine ribs. We actually, um, as you can see, the little picture where I'm staring at, uh, we we all know how to make wing ribs, or should I explain the process of a wing rib? Okay, uh, so the wing rib is basically part of the plane, but I built one before because I actually went to the EA Air Academy as basic, but we built a little tiny version of this. But now, as an advanced um, EA member, we built the larger version, and we actually got to see this part of a real plane. So we actually went to go see, was it pits, or? No, it was something. It was one, a plane, and we actually, it's a real wing rib of a real plane. So just knowing that, that was pretty sweet to know that I actually built part of a plane. Uh, we actually got to do spark plug holders. Uh, you can pass it around uh, you so. Spark plug holders with um, <laughs> initials on it. Um, unfortunately, I do not have spark plugs yet because I do not own an aircraft, but hopefully soon I'll be using that. Uh, we got to work with composites and uh, actually work with fiberglass and you can tell it's not breakable hopefully. Um, and you can pass that around to see how um, we actually got to work with hypoxic and all the types of fiberglass and layer upon layer and then work with the fabric and get our hands dirty you can say. Um, we also worked on welding which is one of the things that I never knew what was something I could do and was part of aviation but sure enough welding is an aspect of aviation and we actually got to do or play around with some welding tools. Uh, we got to play with fire. Play with fire, yeah. That's a pretty um, good picture, picture that you can put on Facebook and everyone else would be like, you're playing with fire during the summer and nobody else my age I know is welding parts of planes together. So, Hot metal. Yeah, that's another thing that we are known for. But we also got to learn a little bit of the basics of weight and, weight and balance. So learning what is weight and balance, how to find out all the formulas with it. That was a long class. What, that's just all paperwork. Unfortunately, I didn't have a plane to do weighted bonds on. Um, okay. Some other activities, like Trevor was said, um, said in his previous or the previous presentation, was we had a lot of ground school, so um, that helped us out with. Even though we did know both of us, we are currently training. We both know, you know, what V charts are, you know, what causes um, lift and all that. But getting the perspective of a Boeing engineer and actually um, knowing. The community of, you know, he worked with Boeing, Lockheed Martin, all these companies that um, that are part of aviation, and I got to see the aspect of not just building the plane, but what goes behind 
knowing the business and aviation portion of knowing the knowledge of the aviation community. Um, we also got to build rockets. Unfortunately, I did not take a picture of my rocket, but that is uh, one of the rockets that are actually inside um, the museum. I uh, forgot the name of the spaceship museum. The spaceship one, but the museum itself. It's the big museum that's um, there, the, right next to our lodge. Um, was, your, was your rocket that big? No, unfortunately, it's a little small, um, two, uh, one, one liter um, soda. Yeah, it was, then, it was soda can or was that, um, the or Yes. Mm -hmm. the, yes. The, oh, Pope Resny? Pope Resny's museum? Or, it's, it's the EAA. It's the One of the neat experiences is um, we actually got to fly in a Bell 47. I'm not sure if uh, the video will show up on this I had to download an earlier version of this because my computer is newer. Uh, so unfortunately, am I going to be able to show? Okay. Unfortunately, right now it's not working. Um, I could. Um, we have emails with all the other people of all the members here. Okay, so I could try um, work on getting sending an email. The Bell 47, um, we actually got to be in a helicopter. Um, it was a little video that we took. We got to see the size of the AA um, Oshkosh, you know, the whole community that was there. It's like a legit town of RVs, and then we have the planes and the bonanzas. We got to see all the planes. It was a really large community, and you got to see the scale of it. Um, we also got to fly the Cessna Skycatcher um, on the left-hand um, spot and got official time towards our license. Um, right here was a picture of my hand with a pen. Unfortunately, I do not have a video because it's not working with me right now. But it's when I went zero gravity or when you pitch the plane um, up and you feel the positive Gs, but then you pitch it down and you, you see the pen slowly float up. Pilot, for the pilots here, we've all experienced it. It's pretty fun to do. Um, personally, one of my things that um, I personally love to do when no one's looking. Um, okay, uh, one of the neat opportunities about Oshkosh, the, I was there the last two days of Air Venture. So I got to see um, planes like the one that the Thunder, Thunderbirds have in display. And they had a lot of simulators um, in display. So one of the simulators was actually an F-35 training simulator that the Air Force um, currently is using. But they showed only the civilian stuff that we could see. But I actually got um, to fly in a, the F-35 simulator and also the Harrier simulator that the Navy had. Um, or the Hornet. Was it the Hornet? It was the, the, the Sub Hornet. Um, the, Simulated the hat. It got me. Um, when I was in line, because those lines are usually the longest lines. Usually, you're in that line for around an hour or two. So the good thing about being in those lines, it's networking with the people. You know, knowing the engineers and them showing you what each part of the aspect of the little simulator is doing. So even though you're not in the simulator, because you'll be in the simulator for 10, 15 minutes, you're actually in the engineer behind it is teaching you what each component is doing. The process of actually selling it because you could build this nice software into the aircraft but doesn't mean the US is going to want to buy it. It's something that I didn't know but after talking to the engineers and um, understanding the networking behind it, I was able to see the process of becoming an engineer and getting your ideas out there and getting it marketed in the Air Force and seeing it in real life. Um, oh, oh. Unfortunately, again, my video is not working and the Thunderbirds were there and I had a couple sweet videos of the Thunderbirds. Personally, um, I really love the Thunderbirds. Uh, it was the second time seeing them. We, as EA Young Eagles, we actually got to be in the very front row seat. We had our own VIP section there. So we didn't have to compete with everybody else. We actually got to have our own little section where we could record and have the whole air show in show centered just for us. It felt really nice. Um, VIPs, um, we could say we felt like very important people. And um, unfortunately, I cannot show the videos because of the software. Uh, this, this is just the formation where they all take a turn. This one's the yeah. This one's where the aircraft sneak or they do a maneuver on the right hand side, and you're staring at the right hand side, and all of a sudden the aircraft is coming zooming by from your left to the right hand side. So you weren't expecting it, and all of a sudden you get really scared because an, a really loud aircraft just passes unexpectedly through your ears, and that really scared me. Uh, so thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, this was actually in the museum. Um, they had a little uh, 
thing where you can put on the suit. Um, it's basically a little cardboard thing um, where you stand in front of it and you take a picture with it. My dream is actually to um, go to the Air Force Academy, get training, and then um, fly one day, um, day the F-22 or F-35. And it's a really nice experience to actually go to the Air Academy, know kids that are in my age and actually are interested in aviation. Um, build a network, know the process of engineering, and see how diverse um, the a or aviation is, and how small the EVA, small but big the EA, EVA, uh, EA community is. Because a the EA town, you could say, the Oshkosh, it's a large community, but at the same time, it's a small community in the sense of the whole world, or America, you could say, is coming towards one area at its, of a week to ex like share the same passion that we have of aviation, you know, flying, engineering, all these different aspects that we have of aviation. So thank you very much for this opportunity and yeah. That's yeah. <laughs>
There was a couple of the EAA board members who attended it. Um, it was, it rec they recorded it for EAA radio and they also, uh, Jeff Skiles did show up about halfway through it uh, and stayed through the end of it. And I had met him once before at uh, San Carlos when he passed through uh, for his, uh, I can't remember what they called it, his um, bluegrass tour, tour whatever, grassroots tour that he did about maybe half a year ago. And so we got, I mean, it was a really cool experience just, I mean, people would throw a question at you and you'd be like, I don't know how to answer that, but you have to talk anyways. Uh, and, but I mean, and it really, you, you, at, in the moment like that, we, a lot of us were just like, it came up with some really, I mean, cool ideas. And we, it, I think it really is something that EA is seriously working about, or working towards, is, is getting younger people involved. And they, I mean, they have their ideas, but I mean, they, they wanted to talk to us because we were the ones who got involved maybe two years ago. So it's like, how did that happen? So they want to know that stuff. Yeah, it was a very nice time. And uh, I'm sure he'll be going back there. Is that your first time? <laughs> this is my first time. I've never seen so many airplanes. I haven't even flown in a uh, private plane. And my first time was when I was 14 years old and my boss had a plane in San Carlos. And yeah. I just talked to him recently because uh, I worked for him many years. He was 86. He goes from Palm Springs to Grass Valley. And I said, I'd like to get up there and have my son. Because I says, you won't believe my son is in aviation. And I said, he's 17 and he's going to have his license in about another two months. And uh, he goes, oh my God. He goes, I can't believe it. And, uh, I said, yeah, I never forget the day I got in an airplane. My knees were bouncing up and down like Trevor's talking about these young eagle kids, yeah. first time in. And we flew over Half Moon Bay, but I didn't care for those turns that were like that. <laughs> but now he's up with a buddy recently, what parents have to go through when young kids are learning. Uh, his friend got his, what was it, his rating? He yeah, got his private pilot, so he got his tail wheel, wheel, tail wheel within a week. He got his. The one that he's about, he's about he's he's my age and he's put two hundred and eighty hours in. But it was my the air, it was the aerobatic one that topped it off for my wife and I. I said, Trevor, he, he goes, Oh yeah, I did my solo run today and okay. I uh, I'm going with Michael over Half Moon Bay and I heard about this Michael doing and I know him very well, getting the endorsement just the two days, three days before. So he's in I go, What are you guys flying in? Decathlon. I go, you're going over Half Moon Bay, and I knew Half Moon Bay and I guess the valley where there's no residents or whatever, mountains. I said, Do you have to put a parachute on? He says, Yeah. I said, No, you don't do that at 17. <laughs> I said, Two boys at 17 in high school. I said, My wife just said, We signed a waiver with his dad. To let him go in an airplane. We didn't say it was air, you know what? What? He says we only did a they couple covered it loops. All. They covered it all. <laughs> yeah, but that's Fine what, print, remember? that's what a parent has to go through. But I feel I made sure you I feel like he's more safe up there. In fact, me too. He, he doesn't even want to get his driver's license yet. <laughs> so, but I really appreciate your organization sending he and Jose. I mean, I heard so much about the kids and when I was back there and how your organizations and and not every organization could send kids from what I understand and I hear you have a large uh, we've you know, been doing group. it and but I we heard that from other earlier. we got to get in there earlier we yeah. don't get to yeah oh is that how you yeah. got to be a really it, early application EAA I can't believe what the, you think the money that but everything is volunteer there. Oh, yeah. 5,400 people volunteer. And it is the most cleanest place I think I've ever seen. 80,000 people a day going through there. I was just impressed. Yeah. I think I'd like to go back there for 
three or four days after. <laughs> 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 Not the eight or eight days. Yeah, that's when I've gone, it's been like four days. Yeah, and that's what some of the pilots were. There was a couple from down here. I don't know if Jan has her plane here now. The one Jan does have her plane here. 195. Yeah. She's doing a polish job on it or whatever. She's repainting it in LC colors. Yeah, but uh, quite a few. Uh, few. Where was the, the other fellows from? Yeah, San Carlos, Reed Hillview, Palo Alto was there. Everybody. Yeah, I'm from was. San Carlos, but uh, it's amazing how that air show comes together. Over 10,000 planes. And, uh, I just wanted to get a picture, and I hope they sell posters of an aerial view, like Jose said, it was just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I tried to get him to go in a helicopter for 50 bucks and take pictures, but he goes, nah, that's not I, I did it during Eric Academy. I you just did? didn't take pictures. I he did. You oh. <laughs> need to uh, strap on the camera. Else I didn't have anything you. to strap oh. my camera on. Well, actually, I oh. did, but I was in the middle, so I couldn't see. Yeah. So that was very nice. It was great that they had the opportunity to do that. Because the people kept asking him, you think that he'll be back? And he, first thing he says, oh, I'll be back. I'll definitely come back every year. So I think... Uh, There's a couple of us planning next year's flight out. Yeah, <laughs> 17, 18, 19 year olds. Well, and their dads are in it too. Well... Nick and Greg are in on it. Where are you going? With them? Commercial. I said yeah. I'll be there. As long as there's a lab <laughs> and you can actually stand up, he'll go. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd be there so without, without getting up. He wants a G5. He wants a G5. <laughs> Save up. Maybe a three. <laughs> Save up. I retired. I don't know. Now i got to see what I can do with this. <laughs> and it was interesting to go to the college recruitments from anywhere from... Uh, Emory Riddles, 42000 a year. That does not include uh, flight costs. Flight costs. Um, I did talk to one of his friends that's going to University of North Dakota. Wolfgang or Nick? Nick. That was 12000 a year. Uh, aviation, I think, was what, like six grand for pilot. Or, but just the gym. I mean, I, I don't know who can afford to go to Emory Riddle, but. You gotta, you'll be paying like a doctor after you get out of college. You know, your uh, four years there. But uh, his friend ended up teaching me something. If you stay during the summer, it's only five thousand for tuition. Yeah, but but Nick told me the dollar cost. Oh, okay, okay. And I said, well, now we're talking about it, but. 40 to minus 40 degrees in the winter time was... I'll survive. But this kid was from Burbank, so he could survive. And my wife wants to see him go and enjoy college, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, there was, and I met, I got to meet uh, the woman who just flew around the world, the Lily Earhart. She was there. Yeah. That's it. Well, okay. Well, uh, thank, thank you both for the presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, a week from tonight, we have a board meeting, and everyone is welcome, which you should know. And um, let me see, I want to say thanks to Don and Wolfgang and Louise for allowing us to have something to put in the newsletter, which is coming out every once in a while. So, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.